It's making me want to pass out. Okay, Billy. It's, it's a heyday. That's exactly how I feel, puppy. Nice. Sort of awesome if you like equipment. Hi, tomatoes. Oh, good girl. What is going on? You good? <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Can't even see her. Bikes. Come. Viper, Viper, Viper. I thought we were done this with fertility treatments. These ones hurt way more than fertility treatment, so it's... Doggy, you're gonna, you're have, gonna to... have to go bye-bye. Okay, this side? Yeah. Okay, Piper. I love you, but no, 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 no. Bye. Bye. Can you call the dog? Piper, Piper, Piper! Yeah. Sorry, is that too tight? A little bit, but like... I just, I can't get you. Okay, well. Okay. Why am I struggling with this today? Last one. This week. Like, it's making me want to pass out. This is really weird. We've been flying every other night. I know. That should not have been that hard. But it's the last one. Okay, Billy. It's your turn. It's your turn. It's your turn. It's your turn. Okay. Wasn't that this one that he had a sore foot? Yeah. It doesn't seem to be bathing in anymore. Yep, it's all dried up. Good boy. Yeah, especially their pen. They just constantly. Yeah. Good boy. You're just the bestest in here. I wonder if when they're friendly, they trust you. Like, never been crazy. Good morning. We've already been sort of hard at it on this fine Monday. It's going to be a busy week because hay got pushed off because we got a surprise rain all day Saturday. So uh, we were not as productive as we hoped to be this weekend. So we finished hoof trimming the rams, which is good to have off the list. And we're also going to take an hour or so right now and weigh these market lambs so then that's done because tomorrow's going to be hay and Wednesday we have to pull cedars so I'm sort of maximizing the time I have when I have help. All right let's see what we got this week. So I think we're going to drop down to 100 pounds again to make sure we have a good load. So 100 pounds and over are going to go over here and then the rest will go back in their pen if they don't try to do that before. That gate looks like it's going to tumble. Ruby. Oh, 
hopefully these kind of get some arthritis. Picture of maybe. Nothing in there, sorry. Sorry. I thought I would give you guys an update on that group. We ended up getting 36 lambs. Most of them were in that 100 to 104 pound range, I feel. Uh, but let's just look quick. Okay, so 36 lambs. The maximum weight was 121 pounds. That's one lamb. And then uh, the minimum was a 99.5, but I boosted it up. So for an average weight of 104.5, um, I usually have that as sort of my base weight, but there was, there we wouldn't have had a load. So I just decided, um, because Jess's chemo got moved a week, if this was our typical week, I would have actually waited and shipped next week and they would have been in the weight, in that weight range that I would have preferred. But as it is, we need to thin this barn out anyway. So we're just gonna take them a little smaller than I like. Uh, but that's that's okay on the Jess front We're really really glad she got a break from chemo this week because all weekend she was still really lethargic She didn't take a reaction to the blood transfusion on Friday, but she was definitely not Well uh, Saturday she was sort of nauseous most of the day and then Sunday yesterday she came around Thank goodness. We even had a little walk last night, which she only walked to the barn and back But for me, I was like, oh, thank goodness. She's just moving and walking and she ate a little bit of breakfast. Uh, she ate a few smaller little snacks throughout the day and then uh, she sat down and had a little bit of supper with us last night. But uh, yeah, uh, she's getting dangerously thin. They uh, sort of threatened a feeding tube at our last appointment so I think even though she does not want to eat and does not feel good enough to eat, she is scared of a feeding tube so as we are as well as parents. So between that and her dehydration seems to be still an issue. We've been able to get probably half of what she's supposed to get into her orally. Um, I think they suggest two liters of fluids and we're luck, very lucky and very creative to get maybe even a liter, probably like 800 mils into her a day. She just, it makes her nauseous. She just does not want to drink. So uh, the doctor last week had actually ordered her fluids and of course they never showed up. So we waited for the weekend and uh, I ca we called this morning and sure enough, it's not on our work order. So we're chasing down fluids once again. That's been maybe the most frustrating part of this whole thing is we get different orders sort of all the time but it doesn't get put on her chart and then these poor nurses who you know have to deal with me when i call all panicky they're like it's not on her chart so we can't administer what you're saying the doctor said so then they have to track down the doctor which is not easy because there's so many cancer patients that um it's sometimes 24 48 hours till we hear back from them that part is like excruciating as a parent it's hard enough watching my daughter this ill but i'm not a phone person anyway so when i have to like call and rattle chains it really bothers me our health care system is pretty darn good considering but uh chasing these doctors down after the after the fact is just like oh my god so that's the just front she goes for a doctor's appointment on thursday so i'm sort of trying to build my week around that we're also building our week around hay mark was able to finally cut yesterday so that is down it was still pretty wet we got a we got a we got rain on saturday which was not part of the plan at all we didn't have any sunshine till about five o'clock yesterday afternoon so that was um annoying uh regardless we need to get this off tomorrow morning because they're calling for a chance of uh storms starting at about two tomorrow afternoon so uh, we're hoping for once it misses us we usually don't hope that but tomorrow we are hoping that and then it's really spotty after that so if we have hay left over We'll probably have to do our best attempt at making dry hay and that's looking like it's going to take like two weeks because there's rain like every other day. <laughs> Good morning. It is uh, 
heyday, at least I hope so. It seems to me, it seems still pretty wet, but Mark's like, it's drier than you think. So I'm taking his word for it. Everybody is lined up to come in the next uh, hour or so. I think we told Bob around 10. It's about uh, five after nine right now. So I ran and got the wagons picked up here. So they are here, Mark's putting on the wagon snatchers on the two tractors. And he actually asked Monty to give us a hand. So Monty's helping and our buddy Jeff is helping out today. So uh, I'm sort of a free agent. Uh, so what we're probably gonna do is just sort of between Mark and I uh, be on call for Jess as well. So that's really nice, it takes the pressure off. So, uh, cause we never know if Jess is ever gonna have a bad day. So we like to sort of always be available if she needs us so this frees up me there's a lot of hay here uh, we also called Joel our our friend that bales for us just to give him a heads up saying like we're probably gonna have more than just a bag of, of chopped hay so we'll have to bale the rest they're calling for a ton of rain tomorrow night they're actually calling for a storm later today we're hoping to miss it looks like it might stay south we're hoping so we need to get this hay off the ground so he said he would come and bale it today and then he said, if we think we need it, we can keep it and get it wrapped. Or he said he can take it and, and use it as well. And he said, if we're real desperate, he'll just wrap it at his place and we can come get it whenever we need it. So I think we're going to opt for that one because we have enough, I think, right now uh, between what we have from last fall and from what we did from first cut that we're probably pretty good for the year. And we still have third cut, which um, if they're still talking rain like they are then we still will have a decent third cut and my dog's puking sympathy pains for your mama nice yes it's a heyday that's exactly how i feel puppy <laughs> Well, this is more like hay for us. First cut went way too good. Uh, Ethan actually left because it was too wet, kept bogging up the harvester. So we are re-merging. So we're, we're actually flipping the row over one more time here. You can see Mark doing that right now. Because when he flipped it yesterday, uh, we're, we're moving one row into a row that's already there and that row needed move too. So he's just moving the two over over onto a blank spot in the field, a drier spot, because the windrow that was already there was too wet and it just didn't dry out. So we're hoping with this wind, there's a bit more wind today. We're losing the sun though. It's getting a bit cloudy. Ethan said, let's try again at two. So they're gonna be here in an hour and a half or so, and we'll give her another go. Hay here sometimes is a bit of a hurry up and wait. It is currently, I don't know, six, seven o'clock, and we got rained out. Uh, thankfully, I think we only got like three mils maybe. So Mark and I are just emptying out the last couple wagons that we got rained out with. And uh, we're gonna give her a go hopefully tomorrow afternoon. I had a whack of jobs that I had planned for tomorrow. So now I just have to do some rearranging in the morning, which sort of sucks, but is what it is. So we're going to get these two wagons unloaded and call our quits for tonight. The sun is just starting to come out. I think we got lucky because I think it went north pretty heavy and it went south really heavy. Jack just called from London and said they got they got a heck of a storm. So I think we, uh, we fared pretty good but we need to get this hay off before tomorrow night because they're calling for a 90% chance of like half an inch, an inch. So yeah, it's a uh, it needs to get lifted off this field for sure tomorrow. Good morning. Just preparing to make some babies for 
This will be our December group. This is our this is our Christmas group of lambs. Uh, the boys are very frisky this morning. The temperature has dropped, which is perfect for breeding season. Majority of the group we seeded 14 days ago, and then I changed my mind on the ones that were open, and I uh, put seeders in them the next day. So we split the difference. So some of them are going to be 14 days. The others are going to be 13 days. You should try to put seeders in between 12 and 14 according to my vet. We are gonna pull seeders today. Uh, we're gonna give them a shot of PMSG. We have that all ready to go. And then we're gonna scan them and mark them as to what breeding group we want them in. And I did all my numbers yesterday on the uh, Gallagher. So everything's sorted and ready to go. Cause yeah, we have to try to finish hay today. And we'll just, you got that squeeze? Or they have a squeeze? Yeah, I think they have. Did you lose yours? Yes, you did. Ah, oh, you want her in. Gotcha. You're okay. You're okay. Let's take your time. <laughs> 
She just got caught in that little divot. That is another job done, which is good. It's a bit early. I usually take them mid to late afternoon, uh, but this afternoon, right after lunch, I have to get Jess to the clinic to get her dressing changed. Her pick line dressing needs changed every uh, week. So I have to do that right after lunch. So I thought I'd get that done and out of the way this morning and then um, figure out what's going on with hey mark said it's still really wet this morning so that's not very exciting the race is on i'm not really sure what he planned with our baler if they're gonna bail it because it's gonna be way too wet so yeah it's it was sort of a gamble i guess to cut it when we did when there was a a, a slight chance of rain yesterday uh there was always a chance tonight and then it sort of cleared out but now it's like tonight tomorrow Friday, Saturday, Sunday, there's a chance of rain. So if we don't get it today, I'm afraid the hay will be uh, not great. And I also uh, left word for Carissa to check in on Big Mama. That's not a good sign when she was upside down. I don't know how long she's been like that. I'm glad I saw her when I did, but I'm, I'm worried. <laughs> had a little change of plans. Uh, our hay is too wet to bale, uh, but Joel also has a beautiful harvesting rig for his beef setup. So he has his big crone harvester here in his dump wagon, so he's doing the west side of the field. Uh, Ethan just got here, and hopefully in a couple hours this whole field will be done, but it looks a little ridiculous for how little hay we have. We have all this equipment, but it's sort of awesome if you like equipment. That's Big Mama up there. Mama. Yep. She usually has a sassy look back. That's a, right there. Marge is in the way. <laughs> well, they're missing out on the food. There's tomatoes. You got tomatoes? No, she's right in front of you. Right beside Billy's mom. Hi, tomatoes. Oh, good girl. Good girl, stand up though, stand up. They don't pose, sorry. <laughs> Sound like a dog. Yeah. Not like a dog. The view's pretty good up there, eh? Whatever for the shock, man. <laughs>
Good afternoon. I don't want to show any of the activity that's been going on, but it's been busy in here the last couple days, for sure the last 24 hours. There's a lot of smearing happening, which I am finding very much a relief just because this is July and July can be warm and most definitely out of season for breeding in general for sheep in Canada. So I'm always a little relieved when I see that they're doing what they're supposed to do. A lot quieter today. Uh, same time yesterday I peeked my head in and it was like, it was crazy. Excuse me, I'm running the camera. There we go. You gotta watch where I point this thing. This morning I had a visitor, uh, my good friend Aggie. Uh, last winter I had some artwork made up of a few special friends, uh, one being Billy. He's very, very distracted right now. Anyway, she came to take some pictures today of a few more friends. Hopefully we'll get some designs made up. I have a ton of ideas in my head. Uh, I just have had no time to really logistically plan a whole lot. So the girls at Mariposa are busy working on some stuff, but I really wanted Aggie to work on uh, a few more little projects. She is just an absolute talent with her art and I wanted her to draw a few more friends for me this year for my drop in the uh, fall slash winter. So work is being done quietly and slowly behind the scenes. I just wanted you guys to know that uh, we're in for some, hopefully some really nice things for fall winter this year. I think everything really um, is is slow around here. We're really desperately trying to get out to the fields. Um, it's a beautiful day today in terms of drying, but we got so much rain on uh, the day we're doing hay. Wednesday, Wednesday night, we got like two and a half inches. So we're done for a while out of the fields. We need to get winter barley off. It's done, it's been ready for a while. And then we got a nose into winter canola. We actually have a contract due at the end of the month. So Mark is starting to really panic, but there's nothing we can do until we can get to the fields. And then winter wheat will be right after that. And the good thing with winter wheat is we can run it through our drying system. So even if we can pull it off a little bit wet, we can throw it through the dryer real quick and then get it to the moisture that it's supposed to be at. So. It's gonna be a busy few weeks around here if we can ever get back into the fields, but I think they're calling for like 90% chance of an inch tomorrow. So we went from being drought, like really bad drought for about six weeks to now it's like the tap needs to shut off for a little while, not forever. I hate saying like, I hate telling rain to go anywhere because we always go dry, but um, right now we need about four weeks of just dry weather. <laughs> for everyone else that needs the rain, I am, I'll be glad to send it your way. Just let me know. <laughs> I think for the rest of the day, I'm gonna help Mark. We're, uh, we're almost done siding our cabin. So I think until we can get out the fields between Jess and the cabin, that's, we're just gonna work away at that. Cause I think we have everything ready. Like we're ready, we just can't do anything. Start cutting them quarter inch longer. Piece of batten at 137 and a quarter. Just gonna call us when her picture. I just called her. Oh, what'd she say? We've got quite a bit yet. Okay. Seems to take forever. I didn't pump it as fast today because uh, she's going there. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's good. Aggressive. 
he's a foster like doggy like the, with the rescue. Yeah. So like when they get overrun, he'll foster what they can't look after. Mm -hmm. They just saved 80 puppies from one house. That's disgusting. And Are you like, serious? And bred like. <gasps> Oh, that's so it's sad. really sad. So he saved um, a mom and her babies, and he's like fostering them for the rescue people. He's cleaning the puppies right now, oh, and all the so all the fleas are like coming out. Oh. And it's really sad. And the mom, like they're all so skittish. Do you and have that clamp? Yeah, and the mom uh, like won't let him touch her. Oh. So I don't know how he's gonna bathe. But she's traumatized. Well, she doesn't. She's not used to humans. There's someone living there, but like not taking care of them. Yeah, they just live in the garage and in the backyard. Like they don't have human interaction. And there's too many puppies to Ooh. get human interaction. They have little chihuahuas. Oh. Shows you what people are really doing out there. That's horrible. Good for him. Yeah. Good for the puppies. Yes. You're free, you're free. I'm free.